Welcome to the very first DeviantArt Podcast Live. To kick this off and celebrate the start, we're running a caption contest on DeviantArt where your clever words have the chance to win you a Wacom One drawing tablet. So that's pretty cool. Just writing some clever words, being kind of funny or being really smart could get a really great tool to help you level up your art. Go check out that link in the bio after the stream so that you can have your chance to win a Wacom One. Uh, the winner's gonna be announced on May 22nd, so you have a little bit of time to enter, but I would not wait too long because, uh, you know, you might forget, everything's busy, everyone's very busy. To help us kick off the podcast live, we've got a super special guest who we're about to invite in. Invite in. So we've got Laura Browers. Whether you know her as Laura or Siren, you've definitely seen her work as she's an amazing illustrator and digital artist. And she's joined us today to hang out, talk about art, answer your questions. She's got some amazing information on being an art influencer and also on like respecting and commissioning your art and making sure that you get what it's worth. So now we're going to go ahead and invite in our special guest. Whew, let's see if this works. Hello. Okay, Hi. it is working. Hi. Yay. Okay. <laughs> now I've got to find my balance so that I'm not like completely cut off. There we go. <laughs> nice. The uh, the audio was um I completely changed. I was suddenly here with very different quality because the quality on the stream is very nice, but now I get like phone call oh. stuff. So. <laughs> oh, that's fun. But, <laughs> Hello. How are you doing Hi. today? Good. Yeah. Oh my gosh, the number has just jumped. I expected to be talking to 300 people, and now there's suddenly over a thousand. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh, I'm good. I'm just a bit nervous about this, but uh, I'm sure uh, it will warm up and it'll be... Uh, it'll right. be super fun. We're both wearing our plaid. We are good to go. We're matching. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so gosh. thank you so much for joining us today. No problem. We're really excited to have you. We just recently saw your work for the Start With Love campaign, which was awesome. Thank you. Uh, Thanks. It was really fun to work on, honestly. It was, I mean, having the freedom to pour in all the love in a piece like that. Oh, ooh, wait, pour in love, sharing love with. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it was, it was really fun. So thank you for the opportunity once again. Of I'm course. Really yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I would love to start off just by getting, well, just by being in the flight path of a plane, apparently. I don't know if you guys can hear that. I apologize. But just by getting to know a little bit about your journey and how you got started with art and hear a little bit about you and art. Um, okay, where do we start? I mean, we could start all the way at the real beginning or at Let's the Let's start at the, the real beginning. beginning. <laughs> well, I'm from the Netherlands. I'm currently in the UK, uh, but I'm a, a Dutch artist. I uh, started drawing pretty early on in my childhood because my mom was always creative. She uh, encouraged us to kind of have our own hobbies and be creative in our downtime. It was just a way to keep us busy, honestly, but uh, I really tapped onto that, and then I was like, okay, in school, you start getting praise, and I was like, ooh, I like I like where this is going, and I like drawing with my <laughs> friends, um, but I wasn't really good. Uh, all of my friends were really good. I just, I was jealous of them being able to draw Pokemon very well, and <laughs> started doing the same thing, um, and then uh, I was actually out of school for a very long time uh, because of uh, being in healthcare, and I just took to drawing and the internet including deviant art uh, 11 years ago so i must have been wait hold on yeah like 13 at the time uh we'll go with 13 because that's the youngest you can be on the site so let's yeah. not get you in any trouble <laughs> i think so i think i was 13 um but the uh yeah i mean i was on, on other websites before that um social media websites and then i started I'm making my own like little community. My friends were joining Vivian Art and uh, like local friends, and that's the way that we started getting in touch. And uh, I started drawing pretty much every single day, and sometimes even posting a new piece every single day. Um, so yeah, that was uh, that was pretty much the beginning, and you guys were there pretty much from you know the <laughs> early start as well. So when I got my first tablet, that was that was pretty much where I started posting it and becoming more serious about it, honestly. So that was a walk home too, by the way, because <laughs> very excited about the one that's being given away. So, <laughs> yes. uh, so we've already got some questions from chat. Uh, Katrian six 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 says, "Are you self taught or did you study art? And do you draw traditionally or only digital?" Mm, I mean, I always find the self taught versus um, uh, studying art question a little bit difficult to answer because I think every artist ultimately is self taught. Um, you can go to an art school and learn nothing. 
uh, it's up to you to actually practice and, and become the artist that you want to be uh, and take from your teachers what you want to become. And you need to be good to even get into an art school anyway. So I would say most artists are self-taught up to a certain degree and then they have to continue. But I never had any formal education and I don't think you have to to be a really good artist and get into a career more seriously. But that's, so that's a whole other thing, obviously. But yeah, I just taught myself with resources online and using other people's work uh, to feel inspired and all that. Um, and then what was the other part of the question? Sorry, I uh, missed you, it. <laughs> no, it's fine. Uh, do you <laughs> always draw digital or do you also venture into traditional art? Uh, I used to draw more traditional because everybody was using Copics back in the day. Um, mm -hmm. Copics, I don't know how to say it. But um, yeah, I, I still sketch traditionally, but I mostly draw digitally now because it's more affordable. It's the the medium that I know best and that I can actually work uh, to a professional degree. And I really want to be able to invest time into learning a traditional medium like oils, because I feel like with my current style, it would kind of blend together quite well. But um, I don't know if I, I'm brave enough to do it and to invest all that money in something that might just well, give it. Oils are intimidating money. too. Like, and scary, oh, yeah. <laughs> oils are so much time invested, just like you have to wait for it to dry to get all that texture. Like people that just, do oil like work to blend it and everything like you have to use all these oils to make sure that you get the right consistency it's like it's a it's a science to learn it honestly so respect traditional artists a lot but i'm uh, i'm not brave <laughs> <laughs> so you talked a little bit uh when we started about you know finding an online community and you're mentioning dvnr and some other places what was it like to kind of start early and find that community and those friends online uh i think I kind of have a, an answer already. I don't know how that happened. Normally I've been thinking for ages, but it, it was really important. And I'm really thankful that I got that because now a lot of people start using Instagram and Twitter before they even get onto, you know, a, a more specific like group of people because they form those communities and like Discord and all that sort of stuff now. While back in the day, the specific communities were all that we had. So um things like instagram just didn't exist i remember when instagram like was just a photo editing app and, and i was like okay i'll use it to edit my pictures and i was like wait you can actually post your stuff here um but yeah i'm thankful because now a lot of people approach me and they're like how do you find artist friends because i always say like how, yeah that's really important to feel inspired and to to get into it but um and, and to feel motivated for a longer period of time but uh I feel like I just naturally got that experience. And now sometimes yeah, I have to remind people that those places actually exist. So, yeah, I'm, just it was important for me. It was one of the reasons. It was my social interactions, uh, all the social interaction that I had during that time when I was pretty much just uh, isolated, as a lot of people are now. Um, I mean, social media is more important than ever, but that was pretty much my entire teenage years from 14 to um, to 21. I was living... 24 seven in healthcare. Um, so yeah, that was my life. My life was social interaction mm -hmm. online and basically how people are living now where you only go out for very bare necessities. I wouldn't even shop for my own food because it would just, it was just healthcare food and it would be thrown into an oven and <laughs> I didn't need to care about it. I would just had to fill out a menu every week. Um, but yeah, the, the, that is so important now. And it was so important for me back then. And I still always say to people, like, if you can find a smaller community or even create, like, a chat with people, like a group chat where you can talk to your friends and get into, you know, sharing your artwork and giving critique and uh, building yourself up to be a more professional artist that way is very important. Yeah, I Sorry, think there's a really... <laughs> no, I think that's a great answer. And the stuff that uh, you mentioned in there about, like, finding that community to really help you build versus just finding a place to post for a business, I think mm, is really yeah. important. Um, I think that when I look at my own art journey, the amount of time that I spend with friends is where I find my most growth in my art. Mm. And it's fun whether, you know, we're at a pub drawing or we're, you know, just at someone's house on a weekend. You know, there's a lot of growth there. And so, Honestly, that's what I would do in, in offline situations as well. Just go to a cafe together. And uh, I wasn't old enough to drink a beer then, but I would just drink a hot chocolate and get a cake and, <laughs> <laughs> and draw them. So, yeah. The yeah. comments, by the way, I'm just distracted by how many people are like, 
there's so <laughs> so many mustache comments right now. They're really. I'm like sorry, it's <laughs> quarantine. No, I'm saying people who are like, "Oh, Siren used to be my best friend." We're we're both we're both um, looking at everyone else's comments. <laughs> they stand out. They're very nice. They're very complimentary. Yeah, th yeah thank you, Chat, for being so positive. Uh, really quick, just for people who just joined, uh, I've seen a lot of questions about the Wacom tablet. Uh, we will be posting a link in the bio of Instagram after this video. So you'll be able to go on there. There's a caption contest on one of Laura's pieces and you'll be able to caption that for your chance to win the Wacom One tablet. It's really low barrier to entry. We want to give something great to you guys during this time to help you, you know, keep working on your art. So we're excited to be able to give that away. Or I already give it saw away some... a bit, hold the contest <laughs> around it. <laughs> I saw some really funny ones already. So uh, there's like, there's the ones that are like, okay, this is this will relate to a lot of people. And then some of them are so specific where I'm like, what the fuck? It's really that, funny. That, that piece is so perfect too for uh, the captions. Like, I think I can pull it up. One second. Let's see if I ruin everything. It's going to be this piece. There we go. Oh, Look at that. I didn't know Instagram Live did that. Oh, yeah. You can run videos too. Are you ready? Oh, are you ready for your mind ready? to be blown with an ad? Oh, God. Okay. Oh, oh my this. God. It's almost mm -hmm. like it's happening right now. <laughs> That's so cool. It's very loud. But, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't loud like, for me. I didn't hear it, unfortunately. Maybe oh, it's well. just uh, on the, the viewer side. <laughs> Maybe. But uh, okay, we've got one more question we're going to ask right now. So I'm going to put that in before we continue to talk. Uh, we've got a question from Aline Gjev, which is, what's the most difficult part about living off art as your full-time job? Cool. Um, hmm. The diff most difficult. Oh, there's like there's a lot of difficult parts about it, but it's honestly just nice to be able to do it. Honestly, I was able to live off um, my artwork as like my, my personal artwork very quickly because of my audience, and I basically uh, had to start a business because I was getting so many inquiries and opportunities to work with people. So. I don't know if I'm the right person to ask because it was like, it was genuinely just a hobby and I roll into it being a business. I never, never like had that as like a realistic idea. I, I mean, I was hoping for that, obviously, because I know that there's a lot of professional artists out there, but I like, I didn't go to school because I was in, in, uh, in healthcare. I, I literally didn't go to school. So that's why I had a lot of time to draw. Um, so yeah, I don't know that because hmm. a lot of my friends who are now freelancing without like necessarily a big audience, I think clients are always difficult. Um, finding clients and also communicating with clients, a lot of creatives working with people that aren't necessarily creatives are, that's genuinely just my honest answer. Um, it sounds a bit like rude to go like, oh, these clients are the, the ones that, you know, make it difficult, but it's it's a skill that a lot of people forget about being actually really good. It's a soft skill, I guess, to be able to communicate about the artwork and um, go for your own rights and be business minded. I think it's it's a very different skill than obviously being able to draw very well. But yeah, I think that's a, that's the genuinely most difficult thing besides taxes. But you don't necessarily have to do it if you are an artist. <laughs> there there <laughs> was a really cool for that. <laughs> uh, panel at CTN this year on soft skills in art that. Oh. I went to. It, it was really impressive because I think that's one of the things people don't necessarily think of is there is that business side where you have to be able to really communicate with people. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Uh, I'm really happy to have people that now do that for me, <laughs> that help me out with basically just doing all the, the business side of things so I can focus on really creating, but that's definitely a luxurious position. And I always talk to people about how important it is to know how to form an email and, uh, also to protect yourself but also your client and make them feel comfortable um and ask them the right questions that will help you create a piece that they will ultimately be very happy with um yeah you really need to be able to put yourself in a non-creative shoes if that makes sense and sometimes you have just the look of working with creative people as well so <laughs> really quickly what would you say the right questions are to ask when you get like a brief Ooh. to make sure that you're hitting the topics that your client wants um, making sure that your workflow aligns with uh, what they're expecting and that they know what they can expect from you, like where 
um, they're going to be able to give input and in what they can change in what stage. Because if that's the most like basic outline, I guess, if you have a piece and they want um, they want you to create a complex like composition, the first thing you do is agree on the composition and make sure that that looks good. And then you say, okay, once I've done that, I can not go back to changing the whole composition from the start if I've done more rendering. Um, because if you do all that, that work, you basically don't want to do that until you, you know that that's what you want to lock in for. So, um, yeah, that's one of the most important things that I can say. And also making sure that they, uh, they know that, you know, your hours are set and that you are making the prize for these hours. And if they have really, really big requests after that, they can always do that, but you will have to renegotiate your hours and your price um, as well. Because, uh, yeah. yeah, they can honestly, a lot of artists I know that will just keep working and working and working to create the perfect piece and try to please their commissioner uh, to a point where it's just impossible, honestly, for them to justify the amount of work that they're really doing. Yeah, so, I, I, that makes sense. I, no, that makes perfect sense. And I think so many artists find themselves in that trap because we've been wanting our art to affect people, right? You make art so that you get that response and you can evoke a feeling or tell a story. And so you really always want to please. And that's kind of the counterintuitive part of it as a business too. It's you know, very right brain, left brain of you really mm -hmm. want to give someone something that they love, but it's like, you also have to protect yourself and finding that balance yeah. and getting you and your client through that is such a challenge sometimes. But yeah. Somebody said, um, or else the client leaves. I think, yeah, the, it's always, that is the worry that people have where the client might go away and find somebody else or not pay you. Um, that's why those things are really like important to agree upon uh, before you start working on it. Like make sure that you have written approval if you can speak with them in person. Um, but even if you speak with them in person, like have them sign something so that you know these are my terms and, and conditions and this is how I work. Um, but that's all like very legal stuff. So it's always difficult, you know, to, to set that up basically without uh, having actual legal paperwork in place. Ooh, that's a, <laughs> a mouthful. <laughs> well, hey, I want to dive in now on, uh, w when we talked earlier this week, I was just like fascinated on your point of view of being an art influencer. I thought that you had some really cool things to say there and just like uh, talking on that. So what's it like being a very followed, very influential artist? Um, I mean, I, I spoke to you about the the sort of misconceptions of, that people have uh like oh oh you just have this influence over your people but they don't realize that they have a lot of influence on my work as well because i approach being an influencer as my business if that makes sense uh may sound cool to some people but it really just comes from a place where i want to make work that um will reach as many people as possible and uh, because i know the impact of design rather than actual artwork and i just function better doing artwork um, with a goal in mind. I find it really difficult to just draw um, for the sole purpose of it being art and conveying my personal emotion. I find it easier to place it outside of myself. Um, the, uh, the part of it being an influence on me also uh, affects beyond that because the companies that I end up working with, I can give advice to based on a bigger community, not just my own experience because you know, I get so many opinions when I start talking about a certain topic. So there's a, there's a lot of value in that. And I've, I've had the joy of working with some really big companies over the past four years now, I would say. I've been running like this Instagram influencer artist gig, if that makes sense. Um, and yeah, that's, that's, I think, one of the things that people forget is that um, that is a separate job uh, and a separate skill as well, because a lot of people just assume that you know, most of my work is just drawing, but, and fortunately it still is um, because I've made it that way. But being an influencer is definitely a separate thing that I'm really interested in um, because it's such a new thing and it's really interesting, really cool. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> just, I, I'm so used to reading the comments and like, I know, right? <laughs> it's it's really hard once you get used to 
doing like Twitch or any sort of live stream, you're constantly multitasking all the time. Reading the chat, going like, yeah, hey, just, thank you for following. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hello. <laughs> At least oh, we don't have the, the notification. <laughs> yes. A hundred uh, bits from, uh, <laughs> from DeviantArt, huh? <laughs> yeah. And, and sub alerts just flashing across the screen. Uh, Funny. <laughs> so uh, one thing too is I feel that there's a lot of there tends to be a negative connotation in creative communities around the word influencer. Like there's kind of this sense of like, is this person sold out if Mm. they're an influencer? How do you perceive that? Just to know the whole, I think the whole world in general and even influencers, they're so like, Oh, I don't like the word influencer. I prefer the word creator, but creator. I also feel like is sort of demeaning to the fact that we're all just basically doing a job, but with a different like output medium. You know, a video creator that makes something for TV isn't being called a creator, they're called a, a producer or a, a presenter or a host or uh, an actor or whatever. And yet, somehow, we're influencers or creator online. So I kind of understand where they're coming from. Uh, but I think you can be an actor or uh, an artist and a producer and an influencer at the same time because... Being an influencer to me is kind of an honorable title because you've created your own platform separate from uh, a traditional medium, which is also cool. It's a more traditional route to, t- to take and it's very difficult because you have to have credentials, experience, and often uh, times you need papers to work in the field that you do that are related to a college that has a, a course that, or, or you need as a course uh, related to it. But um, yeah, I think it's, it's really just a separate thing and I would always see it like that and I don't really feel ashamed about being called an influencer or calling myself one because that's kind of just what I do (laughs) it's just a separate thing from being an artist and sometimes people say I'm either an influencer or an artist and I'm like no it's just it's two different things if that makes sense um where would you find the difference between just like an artist with a lot of followers and an influencer how do you define that for yourself I don't think you need to have a lot of followers to be an influencer and having a lot of followers isn't necessarily me or an influencer either. Um, I think they're separate from each other because um, in a lot of ways, micro influencers, people with smaller audiences online that, I mean, for example, some of my friends who are an influencer have like two, 3000 followers on Instagram. That's a lot of people still, especially mm-hmm. if they're related like to your immediate friend group. Um, and those micro influencers are often hired by companies way more because their influence per person is much higher. If you have a million followers, you, I mean, if you, if you play it well, and if you have very nice followers, they're still going to care about what you say, but there's always going to be a little bit more of an impersonal sort of bond between that because mm-hmm. I, and a lot of my friends don't have the ability to have a, a million friends. Um, while maybe a thousand people you will meet in your life a million you want so um yeah i think oh i'm trying to find the sentence again i'm sorry um uh the the difference i don't think lies in the in the number it it lies in the actual like approach that you have to it and the jobs that you do and the what you do with that influence in in a way you've been given the influence but you're not necessarily an influencer so I guess that's it. <laughs> yeah, that makes that, sense. Ooh. Yeah, that makes Difficult. total sense. And like, I think what you're saying with micro influencers is so true because they do have that closer connection with their followers. And yeah. there's a lot more of that direct connection and that real sense of knowing the person when you're working with micro influencers. That's really special. Mm. Uh, I feel like my following, thankfully, has always been quite personal and um while respectful of my privacy, they're also, um, I don't know, they see me as a normal person after all. So I, I kind of am just lucky that that's the sort of audience that I've garnered. And that's the people that end up showing up at conventions and that I actually end up talking to, uh, whether it be on Twitch or on Discord or something like that, or responding to them on Twitter and having sort of casual conversations like that. Um, yeah. It's, uh, really how, how, <laughs> how, uh, What's an experience you've had where you've met someone that's a follower of yours at like a convention? Oh, fool. I mean, I've had so many of them and they're just always just really chill. Uh, I mean, sometimes uh, when the conventions are bigger and it's a country where I have a lot of followers, it's, it's very short interactions. And I try to pump as much like kindness to that individual as possible, but 
you know, there's always a little bit of like, I wish I could say more, but I can't, uh, because there's a line I had to talk to people, which sounds stupid, uh, but I'm thankful that obviously all these people show up to actually talk to me. Um, but thankfully, most of my conventions, they, uh, I just have like a small booth. And um, because the people are just going by, if they see it's busy, they just walk around and they come back at a time where I'm less busy and I end up being able to talk to people. Um, but um, the funniest ones are in person, of course. The first time I ever got recognized was, an, was at an airport by a security person. Like I literally just put my back through it. Uh, and it was in London, actually, coincidentally, where I'm right now. Um, and I put my bag in and this is, I didn't really have a lot of followers, maybe like a hundred thousand. I mean, not a lot, but obviously it's a lot uh, still. Um, but I put my bag in and it was one of my tote bags from my online store at the time with my artwork on it. And the guy, just the guy at the back, who's like carrying the boxes back, he goes, excuse me, miss. And I was like, oh my God, did I do something wrong? He's like, is this your bag? And I was like, yeah, it is. Is there anything wrong with it? And he's like, no, uh, so I, I saw you and I wasn't sure, but then I saw your bag and I think I follow you on Instagram. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> it was very funny. That was the first time it ever happened. And I was pretty young at the time and I really genuinely didn't expect it. I was just there for just a tourist trip. I was like, what? <laughs> I was genuinely scared for a second though, because I'm always, I'm that type of person who goes, oh my God, I hope the alarm in the store doesn't go off because, you know, or, you know, yeah. when you, Mm-hmm. when you like exit through the the cashier bit because you haven't bought anything you're like yeah bye and you're like i hope they didn't know they didn't think i was stealing <laughs> yeah you gotta That's pat me. your bags really flat yeah <laughs> everything so it can look like you didn't take something i don't have anything in my pockets i said <laughs> yeah you turn them out <laughs> show them well, really guiltily <laughs> yeah exactly nothing suspicious here <laughs> so oh, really gosh. quick let's go a couple questions uh mm. We've got uh, how a lot of people from It's Joe Lee to Creatively Joe Lee to uh, Emma Hart all want to know, uh, just getting your art more noticed. How, how do you go about that, whether online or otherwise? Oh, ooh, there's so many different ways to do it. And you have to do just a lot of them, honestly. Um, I think it always changes. And I think that's where it's difficult because back in the day, it was like, used to correct category on DeviantArt or used to write hashtags or uh, tag this big Instagram influencer and you'll get more likes or draw from this specific fandom and you'll get a lot of likes guaranteed. Um, now, I think those things still apply, but because of algorithms changing, places changing and um, also trends changing in terms of artwork, I think you always need to be adaptive and just see what works. And I still do that to this day. I used to think that I needed to post every single day to stay active and to have a lot of people watch me. But uh, I realized that that's not the case, thankfully. So it's, it's really relieved me, uh, even if I'm gone for weeks sometimes, um, working on other stuff and doing freelance jobs or traveling or, you know, being busy with my own life, I can still come back and just because I know how social media works at this time and I've put a lot of time into um, building an audience that knows my name off site as well um, and meeting them at conventions and all that sort of stuff. I've been able to do that. Um, I think offline is also greatly undervalued. Um, going to conventions is a steep investment, but if you are you uh, if you are able to do it and if you are you know if you believe in your work, uh, investing in products and a booth is a really good way to get to know other people in the community as well. Um, and I found that having art friends is so incredibly valuable. Talking to my friends about what they find works and sharing their work and them sharing my work and collaborating and um, just, you know, observing the community and discussing what's going on. And, uh, hey, I feel like I'm not getting as many likes on Twitter anymore. And has anything changed for you? That sort of thing is, is always a you know, has always been really valuable to me. Um, There's no shortcut to it. It's really, really, really a lot of work. And it took me a long time as well. I was definitely lucky, but a lot of my success also came from noticing patterns and noticing what worked and doing things like giveaways and drawing people that I admired because, you know, I wanted it to be fun and I wanted to draw the things that I like and be known for that. Yeah, that's a... That's basically it. There's so many things. 
<laughs> well, really quick, we're going to do another plug for the caption contest. Yeah. Uh, so, we're going to bring up that image again. Uh, so, there will be a link in the bio on the Instagram after this stream. So, you guys can click to go caption this image that Laura drew. And uh, you'll be able to get your chance to win a walk in one tablet. And so make sure to do that. The deadline for that is May 22nd. We'll announce the winner. So do it before that. I would recommend doing it soon so you don't forget that it's there. But uh, we do want you guys to get a walk in one tablet just so that you can have something to create on, especially if all of us are home right now. Hopefully you guys are all staying safe and sane and uh, doing whatever you need to do to stay creative. But hopefully we can help you out some with that by getting you a Wacom tablet. Honestly, I think also just this time is a really good time to invest in new stuff and uh, learn new skills. I know that there can be a bit of a learning curve to uh, getting used to a new tablet. And it's quite an uh, impressive tablet. It's a 13-inch uh, uh, display tablet, right? Um, I believe so, but let me pull it up. On... It's a screen Welcome tablet. I know that much. Yeah, that it's a 13.3-inch yeah, screen. screen. Ooh, that's the same one I use, I'm pretty sure. So, well, I use a 13-inch tablet as well. It's just a nice size. So, yeah, those, those are real handy to pack with you. Like, you don't worry about, like, lugging, like, the big <laughs> Cintiqs. I got used, I got, uh, I got one uh, sent to my home to try out for a week um, and see if I wanted to invest in a big tablet. And I know a lot of people vouch for it, and it would be really cool to have, like, actual space to rest my entire arm on. But I just kept drawing the tiny little spot uh, and I didn't actually find that very handy to like move around. I just, and my desk barely handled it, to be honest. So I also had to go back for the small one. The big ones are just so heavy. <laughs> the small <laughs> it's, ones it's, are very nice. Uh, before we uh, got into shelter in place, we were doing a lot of artist and res residency stuff, which was great. And depending on the artist, sometimes they would want to bring their own stuff with them. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's always been really kind of exciting to see like what they're drawing on. And some people would say, you know, I have to drive. I can't fly because my tablet is like not going to go in an overhead. Bin. <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> you know? yeah. Oh, especially like the 27 inch things that they have now. They're absolutely beast. Oh my God. I saw, by the way, my friends have joined Piccolo. And yeah, I saw yeah, Piccolo pop up. I just up said, <laughs> hello, sorry. I just need to fly. <laughs> <laughs> no, please. We're, we're live. We should take advantage of being live too. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> uh, so I do want to, uh, you know, go through and let's just say hi to some people in chat right now. Uh, yeah. If you guys are here, say hi. Say where you're watching up. from. I would, I would love to hear where you guys are all watching from because this is cool. We rarely get to do live stuff, but what a time to be able to do that. I see a lot of Brazil already. Uh, mm -hmm. That's funny. <laughs> There, that's the usual comment. I know people keep saying, come to Brazil. I wish I could. I can't now, but I will as soon as uh, I'm able. <laughs> South America has some amazing artists right now. Mm. Like, so many. Gosh, and Spain, too. Uh, my mm -hmm. other friend who's here as well. Uh, and also my friend Miles is here. Uh, hello. <laughs> it's very nice. Also from London, Birmingham, Indonesia. But yeah, Spain. Uh, I went to, what was it? It's like it was almost like an LA area, and I feel like even in my hometown in the Netherlands, Eindhoven, they have like an LA sort of area where it's all these cafes and people host uh, drink and draws and that sort of stuff. Gaming community is big there too, so it's like gaming companies coming together with uh, all the people. Oh my gosh, somebody like doesn't that, know where they am. <laughs> I, I like that you <laughs> say you. Oh no! Oh jeez! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Are you, are you good? There we go. I think it's fine. Yeah. I've, I've got an improvised setup. It's the, the, something. The, yeah, the, that's exciting, though. That's the fun of life. Uh, <laughs> oh, gosh. Here uh, we go. Hold on. The cable is in the way. That's it. I think. Hopefully, it will stay in place. Right. Uh, it's I, live, I love guys. That, I love that your <laughs> idea of an L.A. area is, like, nice cafes and pubs. And my idea mm. of L.A. is, like, someone yelling at me on a street corner. <laughs> I know. I mean, so, I went to L.A. last year. That's kind here. of what it is. <laughs> But I, it's like, it's LA, it's LA. What uh, foreigners think LA is like without ever visiting. <laughs> uh, I would love to, I would love to live in the LA that people think LA is. <laughs> if it's you guys kind of find that. Yeah, if you guys find that, please let me know. I spent way too much time in LA. <laughs> uh, uh, Piccolo, 
the LA traffic being hell, I don't agree with that. I don't know. I thought it was way like it was exaggerated from what I experienced. Sorry. I think it's it's it gets a lot of flag, but if you know how to handle it, it doesn't seem too bad. You can drive places. It's not as bad as London by a mile. Uh London is like probably worse. I know LA is so notorious for it, but oh my gosh. I just uh, want to go it's back better to my than small it has town. Been. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, I can imagine now during this time, everybody's just working from home. Oh my gosh, be, uh, right now, if I need to run an errand, it's like, oh, I, I, the dreams, yeah. <laughs> uh, so before we get too late in the stream, I would love to talk about one of the things that we talked on yesterday was helping people find ways to price their work, or at least get some ideas of ways that they might be able to price their work and do commissions. Mm. Uh, just because I feel like that's a question that everyone gets and everyone has to find their own way. Mm -hmm. But some things that maybe you did to learn like, okay, this is how I'm going to start pricing my artwork or how to find value in your art. Um, I, I mean, I had the luck of having a lot of friends who went to art school. So I used their sort of student rate and their professional rates that they talked about as like a starting off point for myself. Um, but I just kind of went, okay, from the sorry, ooh, just there was some uh, some dinner. <laughs> the, um, <laughs> no food, just added uh, flavor. <laughs> the um, oh god, it's it's an evening for me, guys. So I'm so sorry. Um, I kind of started just with that that student rate, and then I I increased it as I got more well known. Um, uh, but pretty much could like start charging about thirty five euros an hour, I would say, because that's what they start from here to advise you i know it's kind of difficult to like really talk about pricing because the government and, and uh, unions are not able to uh, really discuss a general pricing because it it makes for an unfair market and a difficult market to manage as well um so that's why there's so little information out there um i think what's really important though is just to um see what works for you if you want to do like an hour contract and start timing yourself really um, strictly, that's fine. But having a rough idea about how fast you work and being able to give standard prices to people uh, based on what I think uh, my hourly or my hour investment is going to be versus my hourly rate is uh, is where I started. And thankfully, I live in a quite um, wealth country that has uh, quite a few people working in uh, freelance fields, uh, primarily freelance fields like design and. Um, and other sort of creative industries. Um, so there was always somebody that I could ask about this sort of stuff. But yeah, I, I talk to other people who have no idea about this sort of stuff. Um, and I see a lot of people charge way too little for specialized artwork online. And it's it's stressful, but it, the best thing that we can do as a community is go, hey, I think you're undercharging. Um, uh, and a lot of people undercharge um, but it's it's not necessarily, you know, go, you should call them out or like go, hey, you're undercharging of your prices. But a, a tip can go a long way and that sort of stuff. Because um, if you hire somebody and you think they're undercharging, just throw on what you think is reasonable and uh, help out artists that way and make them understand that this is actually fair for them to ask and they deserve that sort of rate. Just because mm -hmm. some people won't pay your rates and pay people fairly or pay at all doesn't mean that nobody will. Um, and a lot of people ask me, but if I charge too high, nobody wants to hire me. And then I'm like, well, that's a business problem. <laughs> a lot of people go, right, okay, um, how the hell am I supposed to take commissions that way? And I'm like, well, you can't just start a business of nowhere. You have to make it viable. You can't overwork yourself. Um, and you also can kind of do that to an industry because you're going to make the industry harder for you to work in in the future as well. If you're going to take a selfish point of you know, view uh, that's directly influencing yourself, not selfish, just to self like, as, I don't know, a point from yourself. Um, but other people are of course also influenced by that. Um, but yeah, being, being aware of what makes your work desirable. And if you can charge a minimum wage at the very least, maybe there's other things that you need to focus on before starting to work professionally um, sometimes that just has to be um, learning to start a business learning like the soft skills learning actual business skills or uh, 
learning to improve your art skills and professional art skills as well because you know drawing for yourself is one thing but drawing for a commission is a completely different thing um yeah it's difficult uh, because obviously a lot of people do it for fun and do it for a favor and do it for friends and that's obviously not what i'm talking about right now i'm talking about people who want to do this for work and who want to you know be part of an industry um so hopefully that is enough context for this <laughs> yeah i think that's perfect uh one of the things too that you mentioned that i want to hit before we we do have to wrap soon but uh you had mentioned when you first start working with companies and kind of the mentality of if they approach you you've already kind of got a foot in the door yes right as far as your rates the clients as well if they want you to work on something they need you for a specific skill if they can do it themselves you know you can you can set your prices and that's that's a normal uh thing to do in like a business uh you wouldn't go to a supermarket and ask them to undercharge uh for their food um because they they have a business to run as well and i think that works the same way with arts as well if you have um if you have the the starting ground always take advantage of that uh, to go right okay you need me for something you approach me so here are my rates um oh that's uh that makes sense <laughs> oh gosh yeah. well yeah i think that's There's a lot of questions right now sorry it's a no i, I was yeah. trying to incorporate what people were asking about the the commission stuff because it's a tough thing it's always a it's, uh, a difficult thing to answer when people come up to me um, it's, it's very tough and it definitely depends on project what point of stuff you're working on so many variables that there's no right answer but just having that conversation i think even to get the mm. conversation started is important for artists so yeah i know there's a lot of young people following me so when i talk about this sort of stuff i'm also talking from having to put myself in that mindset again so i know that there's probably a lot of uh, more professional artists looking at this maybe not being as much like informed by it but hopefully it was followable and interesting for both groups if that makes sense uh just being aware of who might see and who might think uh okay there seem to be positive reactions okay thank god <laughs> <laughs> i'm trying to be honest and helpful okay <laughs> gosh yeah I, i've been loving the chat they're very positive today so yeah. thank you for that chat you're making it very easy on us it's nice are you guys doing more uh deviantart live podcasts just a question yeah the yeah. plan is to kick it off and you're our very first one so thank you for being a bit of a guinea pig what, um, what an honor <laughs> thank you <laughs> well Aww. it's very exciting we're looking to continue these and just do more conversations and really help you know uh bring some favorite artists into people's mobile devices <laughs> awesome. good, good to have those good conversations so oh. <laughs> everyone who's watching thank you for joining uh if you are watching this delayed thank you for watching it delayed uh <laughs> sorry that you weren't able to ask questions in here for everyone that submitted questions thank you so much really appreciate it uh also just a reminder we are doing a caption contest on one of laura's pieces the link is in the bio of our instagram so you can go to that and it will give you all the information of what you need to do it's just leaving a caption and that will enter you uh so that you have a chance to win a Wacom One tablet so that you can get some digital drawing going during these times. Uh, I've worked with Wacom pretty much my entire career. They're just, they're great. They're great tablets. <laughs> I'm very excited that we can give away something that not a lot of people can invest in. That's really fun. Thank you for asking yeah. me to be part of it for the first time. Thank one. you for being a part of it. It was so exciting. No so worries. People, <laughs> let, let, where can people find you online if they're not following you already? Instagram and Twitter is really easy. Same username, uh, Siren, uh, but with an E at the end, and Siren without the E at the end for um, uh, Deviant Art, obviously. Um, that's pretty much the uh, platforms that are mostly active. Uh, although I am planning to keep streaming because I noticed that there was a lot of people interested right now. So hopefully that will kick off at some point as well. Um, I'm trying to learn a lot of stuff from my friends who are currently streaming, uh, especially during this time. It just seems like a fun way to keep in touch uh, with the community. So that will be a future thing. And you'll just be able to find it on my Instagram probably because I'll be spamming you to death with it. So <laughs> easy. <laughs> well, thank you again. And 
I hope you have a great day. Thank you again, everyone, for tuning in. Make sure to like DeviantArt on Instagram. Follow us. Go to the link in that bio so that you have a chance to win the Walk in One tablet. And make sure to keep tuning in for everything that we're doing. Make sure to check out Laura's piece for Start With Love, our campaign to promote positivity and creativity during COVID-19. And yeah, I think that's it. So I would like to thank you. you guys as well. And thank Chad. Uh, thanks to the chat for being really nice and complimentary about yes. for some reason my teeth and the mustache they're the stars <laughs> of the show apparently <laughs> fuck our advice it's about I, the I, teeth <laughs> I love your glasses I caught the, a glimpse of those at the end yeah they're just, and yes of those I'll be able to see things a lot better this way oh actually not they're very dirty but uh, thank you <laughs> <laughs> alright so everyone much. well have a great day and thank you for tuning in Great night for people in Europe. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.